Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to be answering a question which I've been asked quite a few times now and the question is, do you need to be good at maths to be an engineer? I think this question can actually be split into two. The first question being, do you need to be good at maths to be a practicing engineer? And the second question being, do you need to be good at maths to pass or to get an engineering degree? The reason why I'm splitting the questions into two is because there are two routes to becoming a practicing engineer. The first route being the sort of more standard route, which is to go through school and then to get an engineering degree at university. The second route is generally to become an apprentice technician and then you kind of slowly work your way up to becoming an engineer without having done a university degree. So I'm going to answer the first question and that is going to be, do you need to be good at maths to be a practicing engineer? If you think you need university level maths or even A level maths to be a practicing engineer, then you're quite wrong. At no point in my sort of daily work routine do I ever really need to do any of the complicated maths that I did at university, such as matrices, Fourier series, integration or differentiation. I really don't have to do any of that and honestly I can't remember the last time I did it and to be honest I probably don't even know how to do it anymore. I think the most important maths that you really need to know is going to be the stuff like trigonometry, uh, manipulating formulas, resolving forces, which is essentially trigonometry, and just generally being very comfortable with formulas and units. All of the stuff which I just mentioned is learned when you're kind of 15 or 16 years old at school. So none of the stuff is particularly like tricky maths. I will kind of caveat what I've just said by saying that you do need to be very comfortable with maths and numbers. Now, being comfortable with maths is kind of different to being able to use really complicated formulas or using, you know, stuff like integration, differentiation, stuff that you learn at um, sort of A levels or moving into university. You, you don't need that, but you do have to be very comfortable with dealing with numbers because that is essentially what you're going to be doing every day. So to summarize, I don't think you need to be particularly great at maths, um, but you do have to be comfortable with numbers to be a practicing engineer. So now to answer the second question, and that is, do you need to be good at maths to get an engineering degree? And I will say, yes, you do, because the maths which you'd need to know at university is, I'd say, fairly advanced, not something you'd learn or need to do as if you were doing like a maths major or a maths degree, but you do need to be pretty good um, with your maths levels to be able to sort of get your degree. If you took A-level maths and you kind of struggled, you'll probably continue to struggle at university level because it only gets harder. A lot of modules at university do require a good knowledge of maths. So if you are kind of struggling with concepts, just be aware that it will get harder and you will need to kind of get your head around it to be able to pass your degree. I don't really want to put people off taking engineering as a degree, um, but it's just something to bear in mind. Um, a lot of universities will help you with maths if you do struggle, because don't get me wrong, engineering is revolved around maths, but there's a lot of other skills which you need besides maths to be an engineer. And I think the universities are going to be there to help you, you know, if you are struggling with like the maths side of it you know, they will help you with it. You know, you might be someone who's very creative in design and that's great as an engineer, but you struggle with maths. The university will be able to help you with maths if that is the thing you're struggling with. The maths definitely gets harder as you go into university and to be able to get your degree, you will need a fairly competent level of maths. So really to answer the question, I think you do have to have a good sound knowledge of maths and to be very more than just comfortable in using maths to get your degree and then to get a job in practicing engineering. So just to finish off the video and to kind of summarize, the maths which I do day to day is just stuff which I think is basic maths. Maths which you kind of learn when you're 15 or 16 years old. You honestly don't have to be a maths wizard to be a practicing engineer, but you do have to be somewhat pretty capable at maths to actually get your engineering degree. I thought it was fairly important to kind of differentiate the two different routes to becoming a practicing engineer the standard route going through university and the other route going through apprenticeship. As far as I'm aware, the apprenticeship route won't have the kind of higher level university degree level maths which you need to do to pass that degree. Instead, I think the maths which you do at apprenticeship level is going to be more in line with the kind of maths you actually do as a practicing engineer. And hopefully that's going to be useful information for anyone who's already a 
practicing technician or is thinking about joining the apprenticeship program and if you're kind of off put by the level of maths which you need to know hopefully this video kind of shows you or explains to you that you really don't actually need to have the highest level of maths to become an engineer I will stress that regardless of which route you take you do need to be comfortable with numbers so just dealing with numbers manipulating formulas you know being able to rearrange an equation easily or quickly and efficiently is going to be really really important probably one of the most important things to know is how to calculate angles so using trigonometry if as an apprentice technician you will be drawing stuff so you need to know how to calculate an angle say for a pitch roof roof or something anyways hopefully you found this video useful please remember to like and subscribe and i'll catch you on the next video cheers